If you didn't already know, I'm a recently graduated film student, which is why it's probably very surprising to learn that I'd not played The Wolf Among Us until now. Telltale's The Wolf Among Us is a prequel to Bill Willingham and Vertigo Comics' cult classic comic collection, Fables, a gritty adaptation of the Brothers Grimm's classic dark literature. The basic premise is that the inhabitants of the Fables world have had to come into the real world, 1980s New York, where they go about their lives, attempting to coexist. A protagonist is Big Bigby Wolf, pun entirely intended, a chain-smoking, sarcastic, gravelly asshole with a heart of gold, whose main job as Sheriff of the Fables is to stop them from killing each other. Something that goes well right up until the point that a separate head shows up on his apartment building steps. From here, it's a well-written detective story, as he tries to find out who's responsible, and I do mean well-written. I'm sure your job's a lot easier when adapting something off a pre-existing world, but honestly, The Wolf Among Us has some of the best and most smartest writing of a game I've seen in a while. If you can get past some of the kind of cliched plot points. Cliches I often felt worked, given the game's an homage to classic film noir. Something I'll get to later. You've got writing that's honestly up there with some of TV and film. It's also one link to touch on some darker and more adult topics. If you haven't already realised it, these aren't your kids' fables. But in turn, this darker adaptation has led to characters who, whether they be a talking toad or the big bad wolf, feel incredibly human, more so than a lot of game characters. On top of this, the story is incredibly respectful, much like the recent Night in the Woods. It doesn't go out of its way and out of character by explaining things that Big B Shuri know, instead presuming the player is smart enough to work things out. Also similar to Night in the Woods, The Wolf Among Us is a modern day adventure game. But while the earlier took a more platformer-like style, the latter is the traditional Telltale graphic adventure style. Which is to say, it's okay, but with many gameplay issues. Telltale's main work is in creating games similar to later LucasArts point-and-click adventures, like Grim Fandango. And while a lot of the charm and presentation has managed to be brought over, a lot of the frustrating gameplay issues have as well. Walking is of course the biggest sticking point with camera angles and walking directions not quite lining up with WASD. Admittedly, the game's pretty good at not pushing you into a completely different direction when the camera changes, and if you can see the item you wish to interact with, Big B will path find his way over, but you do still often find yourself having to correct for awkward movements as you try to figure out which way to go. Perhaps luckily, these segments aren't used for more serious things, like combat, which instead go for a quick time events where you need to press a direction or mash a key. They're not necessarily going to be for everyone, but I don't mind them too much. Finally, gameplay is rounded off with choice making, a sticking point for many. It's a decent idea, similar to the dialogue trees of RPGs like Deus Ex or Dragon Age, but they end up falling into the issue that a lot of Telltale stuff ends up with. The illusion of choice. Most choices only really affect how characters perceive Big B in the moment, and as a result they end up feeling cheap, like they don't matter. That's not to say they're exclusively bad. Things like giving someone something, lying to someone, or going somewhere first can come back to bite you later. And this certainly isn't the worst offender, but there's a reason these games have a reputation for pointless choices. Additionally, for a graphic adventure game, the game really does seem to lack puzzles. Sure, there's a few minor puzzles, and there's one choice that had potential, but it ended up being that no matter what you did, you'd get to the location at the same time. The rest of the game mostly plays out as a long collection of cutscenes. Cutscenes that at times have fantastic visuals, with clever cuts and transitions and downright beautiful framing. At others though, it feels lazy, like something from someone's first film. Sure, they've tried, but they just haven't gotten some of the techniques down. For instance, the game's full of awkwardly timed hard cuts which could flow much better if J cut. <laughs> Every time I think I'm getting a handle on what's going on, things just get more complicated. Every time I think I'm getting a handle on what's going on, things just get more complicated. But that said, when this game gets it right, it's a sight to behold. I know that cinematic is a bit of a dirty word in the gaming world. I don't blame anyone who's not into this game because of that. But really, this is some of the best camera work in the game that doesn't have Hideo Kojima slapped on it. As I mentioned earlier, the comic, and as a result, the game, is heavily inspired by noir cinema. You know, the classic, a dame walked into my office detective stuff, full of moody hard shadows of curtains. And when it's good, it really lives up. I mean, when it's bad, it feels a bit more like a police procedural, thinks something like Law and Order. Good, but not quite up to the standards of the rest of the game. As good an aesthetic as the game's got going for it, it often ends up having some odd issues with shadows not rendering correctly, which leads to an off look. As I'll get to later, it's the sort of thing that, in a vacuum, I wouldn't care, but it happens enough that it's worth mentioning. 
There's also some moments where the game has some hand-drawn comic-like establishing shots, which don't quite fit with the CG made to look like comic style the rest of the game has. They stick out like a sore thumb, but at least they're fairly rare. The game's animations are generally pretty passable, but there's some awkward keyframing issues that occur, which I'll get to later as well. The game also does often cheat a lot with more complicated stuff, which, while disappointing, I get it, animation is hard, I can't blame them too much. Audio-wise, the game's a bit of an unfortunate mess. On the plus side, music's generally pretty fantastic, hitting the tone pretty well, even if it has been reused. I love the voice actors also gave fairly compelling performances as well, but there's a lot of issues. Everything's largely mixed too loud, with dialogue almost being lost in Atmos, sound effects and music. Speaking of, sound effects occasionally just sound off, like they don't quite fit. <laughs> I mean, I don't work every day. Dialogue also doesn't tonally flow as well. And while I could forgive that if it was dialogue flowing from a choice-related line to a story-related one, the scenes where one sentence to the next feels off. I don't know. How am I supposed to know? It just seemed like a totally normal night. I also had a few situations where dialogue either didn't match the subtitles, was too quiet, or got oddly cut off. It's largely minor things, but they add up. Speaking of minor things adding up, the game's full of tiny glitches that reflect on the game poorly. Things like clipping issues, awkward animations, things not being framed correctly, dialogue not reflecting what you said correctly. Maybe Holly knows. Oh no. What is it? It's not Holly, it's... Continuity issues, and as I mentioned, lighting glitches. When looked at by themselves, they're not too bad, but they happen often enough throughout the game that I can't help but feel a bit disappointed that Telltale let such an otherwise fantastic game have so many of these tiny little problems. Additionally, the game doesn't seem to have preloading, so you get a lot of awkward loading screens, which sometimes lead to things like music playing twice. <laughs> or dialogue playing a good few seconds before the cutscene actually loads. Mr. Toad? Again, it's nothing game-breaking, but it does show a lack of polish the game really deserves. I also experienced two odd, major glitches, which seemed almost like the game got into a testing mode of sort. They're not game-breaking, but they did mean loading back to a previous save game, which is pretty annoying. Honestly, you probably already had something of an idea about whether you'd like The Wolf Among Us just from hearing the words, a telltale game. They know how to tell a story both through writing and visually, but they just don't have good enough gameplay to back it up for a lot of people. If they were working on something more like a Netflix series, like Castlevania, they'd probably be living up to their potential far better. I fantasizing aside, if you are not scared off by the telltale style, you really need to play The Wolf Among Us. While it arguably doesn't get the polish it so rightfully deserves, it makes up for this with incredibly human characters and fantastic writing. If you don't, this isn't going to be the game that's going to change your mind, it's full of glitches and poor gameplay. That said, I personally can't wait for Season 2.